What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with another awesome math lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, dividing when our answer is a non terminating decimal, right? So, we're going to talk about non terminating decimal quotients. Let's jump into what we're doing today. So last lesson when we talked about having remainders and then writing those as decimals, we showed you how to take an easy mixed number like three-fourths, right, and then write that as 75 hundredths, right? We also worked on how to add a zero and keep on keeping on, right? But all of the problems last time worked out perfectly. And you were able to get the remainder to zero so that you could stop by the time you got to the thousandths place, right? That's because there's several different types of decimals, okay? And we didn't talk about this last lesson, but there are decimals. In last lesson, we were talking about terminating decimals. Those are rational numbers that stop, right? Terminate means to stop something, and so the decimal stopped in the tenths, the hundredths, or the thousandths place. For instance, you could have three and seventy-five hundredths, right? That stopped right in the hundredths place. You might have six and one hundred thousandths, right? That's stopping in the thousandths place. But there's also another type of decimal. There are non-terminating decimals, right? And that's what we're gonna be focused on today. What happens when you're dividing and your decimal doesn't stop, right? And there are two types of non-terminating decimals. We have repeating decimals. That'd be like, one third as a decimal is 0.33333 repeating. And a lot of times you might see just the first couple place values written with a line across it. That line across it means that this is just repeating over and over and over again. We also have non-repeating decimals, right? And this is a type of irrational number. Non-repeating decimals are like pi. They're just going to keep going on forever and ever and ever, but they don't repeat itself. So for instance, if you had 5.1367824988 and there's no pattern to it and it just kept going, that would be a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. Whereas a repeating decimal is going to go on forever and ever and ever, right? Hence, non-terminating, but it's going to be repeating the same digits over and over and over again. So let's take a look at a couple examples today where our quotient is going to be a non-terminating decimal. All right, so first we have eight divided by three. So our steps for success are the same as last lesson. We're gonna divide like normal, right? If there's a remainder, we're gonna add a decimal point and a zero to the dividend. We're gonna raise that decimal point to the roof, right? And then if we have to, we're gonna keep on keeping on. That means we're gonna keep adding a zero over and over and over again until we find out, hey, is it a terminating decimal? Or is it a non-terminating decimal? All right, so here we have eight divided by three, so our dividend goes on the inside. Obviously, I'm gonna follow the same steps I have been, right, which is how many groups multiply, subtract, bring down. How many groups of three go into eight? Two, when I multiply that, I'm gonna get six. I subtract and I get two left over. Now, so when you're first learning to divide, your answer would have been two remainder two. Then you could have, if it was a word problem, you could have ignored the remainder, just done two. Your remainder could have been the answer, or you could have rounded up. You could have got three, and then you learned eventually how to do a mixed number, so it could have been two and two-thirds, okay? But just like we talked about last lesson, we want to have a decimal answer. So if you have two-thirds as a decimal memorized, this is pretty easy. Eventually you'll get there, but if not, let's go ahead and finish this out. So we're going to add a decimal and a zero. I'm going to raise it to the roof and I'm going to bring down that zero. How many groups of three go into 20? And that is going to be six. When I multiply, three times six is 18. I subtract, I get two left over. I'm not done yet, because my remainder isn't zero, so I'm at another zero. Bring it down. Three goes into 26 times. I multiply, I get 18. And I see that I've kind of created this pattern because I have two left over. Let's add another one, bring it down and you see that I'm going to keep repeating the same pattern. So once I get to three decimal places and it's repeating the same thing, okay, I know I'm just gonna draw a line over this and my answer is going to be 2.666 repeating, which is what that line means. That means this is a non-terminating repeating decimal answer. So we're really just doing the same exact thing we did last lesson, except we're recognizing, hey, this is non-terminating, it's repeating, let me draw this line, boom, I'm done, 
All right, let's take a look at another example. So we're, here we have bigger numbers, right? And so we're gonna set it up just like normal, 125 divided by 99. I'm going to still follow my... How many groups multiply, subtract, bring down? How many groups multiply, subtract, bring down? Which we have an awesome song about if you wanna check it out, all right? Also a great workout hit, I think. The beat is pretty sick. And so we're gonna start, 99 goes into one, zero times, obviously. Okay, and I always preach it's important to put that zero here because it keeps our place value straight. 99 goes into 12, zero times. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now I'm looking at 125. 99 is gonna go into 125 one time. When I multiply, that's gonna be 99. I'm gonna subtract, more on the floor, go next door, get 10 more. There we go, do it again. And I'm gonna get 26 as a remainder. Now, obviously, right, I have a remainder. We could write all the different answers out, but we know we're gonna do it as a decimal. So let's go ahead and add our decimal and our zero, raise it to the roof, okay? And then I'm gonna bring down my zero and I'm gonna keep on keeping on. Now when I do two digit divisors, typically I teach to make an easy multiple sheet, okay? That means I just list out the multiples of 99, that way I can use addition to help me if I need help, and that way I have it done before I get to this. So I already made this easy multiple sheet, but if you don't know what I'm checking about, check out our other division videos. It's a great strategy. It takes a little bit of time, but you'll never make a mistake. I'm just kidding, I make mistakes all the time. Just ask my wife. So I'm gonna start back over again. How many groups of 99 go into 260? 198, 297 is too big, so that'd be 198. That's gonna be two groups. So put my two right here. When I multiply that, guess what? I made my easy multiple sheet, I already have it. That's gonna be 198. I'm gonna subtract right here, more on the floor, go next door, get 10 more, perfect. And I'm gonna get 62, okay? And so now, guess what, I'm not done. I need to, first of all, go ahead and draw that out. Add my zero, bring it down, and keep on keeping on. How many groups of 99 going to 620? And that would be six groups. So I'm gonna put my six right here. When I multiply that, I already have my answer, 594 and I'm going to subtract. So more on the floor, go next door, get 10 more. Here we go, we got six. We got 26. I'm gonna add a zero, I'm gonna keep on keeping on. Now, I realize I already had 260 right here, so maybe this is starting to repeat itself, but I wanna prove it by doing at least two more to see, hey, is this repeating itself? And so when I do 99 and 260, that would obviously be two again. That's 198. I'm gonna subtract. And when I subtract, guess what? I'm gonna get 62, and I'm gonna bring down my zero again, and I see that I have 620 again, and when I did that, that's gonna be a six, and I see that I could just keep this pattern going, and it's repeating itself, two, six, two, six, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be one digit that's, um, it doesn't have to be one digit that's repeating itself. It could be a pattern that's repeating itself, right? two, six, two, six, two, six. Sometimes there could be three digits in the pattern that are repeating itself. So you gotta keep on keeping on until you can prove that it is a non-terminating repeating decimal. And when we figure that out, we just draw our line right here, and our answer is gonna be 1.2626 repeating. So I'm gonna draw my line over top, and I'm done. All right, so another example of repeating decimal, I wanted to show you it didn't always have to be the same digit that's repeating. It could be a pattern of digits that's repeating. So here is our last problem. Here's one divided by seven. So we're gonna put our one in here. We have our seven right here, okay? And we're gonna follow our same steps. How many groups? Multiply, subtract, bring down. And if you've been watching the video, hopefully you realize that this is probably going to be a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal answer but let's go ahead and solve it. So seven goes into one zero times. So I'm gonna multiply that, I get zero. I'm gonna get one again. So I need to add my decimal and my zero, raise it to the roof, and then drop my zero down and keep on keeping on, right? So seven goes into 10 one time. When I multiply that, I get seven. I'm gonna get a three right here. I'm gonna add a zero, bring it down, and I'm gonna keep on keeping on. Seven goes into 30 four times, when you multiply that, you're gonna get 28. When you subtract, you're gonna get two. We're gonna add a zero, bring it down, 
7 goes into 20 twice. When you multiply that, you're going to get 14. Now you have a 6 right here. Go ahead and add your 0. Bring it down, and you're going to get 60, right? So when you, how many groups of 7 go into 60? That'd be 8. When you multiply, you're going to get 56. You bring it down, you're going to be left with 4. You're going to add a 0, and you're going to keep, keep bringing it down. And you can see right here, by the time you got to the 10,000th place, right, nothing has repeated itself. So how many groups of 7 go into 40, right? That'd be 5. And when you subtract down here, I'm going to get 5 left over, and I have to add a 0. You can see right here that the pattern isn't repeating itself. So typically if you're doing this, whether you're at work, whether you're at school, wherever you're dividing decimals, whether you're even doing it on a spreadsheet, okay, it rounds it to a certain place value. So a lot of times, uh, you know, whoever giving you a question might say, hey, you know, solve this, but round it to the nearest thousandths or the ten thousandths, okay? And that's what you'll typically see. If it's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, they're not going to have you keep going on forever, forever and ever and ever because it would go on forever and ever. There's an infinite amount of digits that make up this number. Now, the more digits you add, right, the more accurate your answer is going to be. But nobody really wants to sit here and go all the way to the millionths or the ten millionths or the trillionths place, right? So typically, if you see a question like this, they'll say, hey, solve this, round it to the nearest, nearest thousandths place, which means you'd have to, okay, go to the two, go one more digit so you can round it, and you'd be done, all right? But this is a great example of a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So just as a quick review, right, there are different types of decimals out there. Nobody ever tells you that in school until you get like to really high math classes, right? But you have terminating decimals. Those are rational numbers. Those are numbers that we typically work with, okay? We have non-terminating decimals, which means they're going to go on for ever, forever and ever and ever. We have repeating decimals. We have non-repeating decimals. And this has been an Instructive Beats lesson. So thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options online. We appreciate you spending your time with Instructive Beats. Please check out InstructiveBeats.com for all your videos, timers, songs, and merchandise that you may need. Again, thank you so much. Instructive Beats out.